Yeah, yeah, this is the Jizzle from Wu-Tang Clan, and right now you're conforming to Abort TV. That's right, Pro Tools. I've seen a kid one night at a spot. He had a Wu-Tang logo on his face. I mean, just a tattoo this big, and then a whole bunch of other shit carved on it. You don't see that often. In it. I mean, I've never seen a G on it logo on someone's face or arm or, you know, not saying that there isn't, but um, I would say it's sort of like a cult following. You know, but we're just regular people. I mean, I, I look at myself as a regular person. Dave McCallum here for Abort TV. We're here on the bus with Genius, Jizza, and Richard Zahn Richards. Yeah, the new album, Pro Tools. You said uh, in one interview, I read that it's not a solo album, that it's a collaboration effort. Uh, what, how would you describe the concept of the, the album as a whole and the, the title, Pro Tools, which obviously inspired Pro by the Pro Tools is program software that's used yeah. for recording, so that really speaks for itself. I yeah. just thought of that one day and decided to name it Pro Tools because we were, they were waiting for a title and how labels are. As far as the album overall, it was originally supposed to be a compilation and um, more like a mixtape. Right. And as time went on and I took longer and longer to deliver, my ideas and thoughts started changing. Some of the songs that I had, some of the brothers get on were used for their own projects because I took a, a while to do something with the song or use it. So a lot of stuff was being used in certain places and it kept changing in the idea. And then, you know, I thought about it one day and the way I said, you know, it's still gonna have my name on it. I don't really just wanna throw anything out. Yeah. So I changed it. Called it Pro Tools. I just wanted to touch on, I mean, the, the one track that's kind of catching everyone's ears is the Paper Plates track, the right. 50 Cent Disc. And I don't really want to get into the feud or anything. I just want to ask you your perspective. On, why do you think at this point in the development of hip hop, you know, 30 some years into the development of hip hop culture, why why are people still, why are people's tastes still tending towards the throwaway lyrics? Um, I just think nowadays, a lot of artists that's in it are just in it for money. And, and, and it shows and their music, yeah. you know, to a degree, as far as the contents, what they're speaking about, and also um, the level of, or the quality of the music, all, all the rhymes, the, the, you know, it lacks a lot of originality. We need a lot of that, you know, nowadays. You know? I mean, that's how it is. Everyone can't be great lyrically. Well, all MCs are not really all that great lyricists. Some are good, some are better than, better than others, some are really great. You know, a lot of them are just so-so, whack, whatever you may call it. But I just think artists don't care to really crap, you know, the majority of them, I mean, what we hear and what we see, don't really care to sit down and really craft a work. And it's sort of you know generally universally acclaimed as a classic hip-hop album at this point. One of our interviews we did was with o Otep. Yes, Otep, Otep Shamia. Your favorite album of all time yeah. was Liquid, Liquid Sword. Sword. She's the heavy metal singer. So, oh, yeah. Boy, it's... she pissed off her fans. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Cutting across genres, I mean, you have an album here that's obviously, you know, in a way wow. timeless. Liquid Sword is a great album, man. I mean, I, this, the theme, the way it was put together, the atmospheric production from RZA, it's a combination of things that just makes it a great album in my eyes. And, yeah. Yeah. You know, it's just good to know that people respect it. Right. It's 2008. Um, thanks to largely the Wu-Tang Clan and other hip-hop acts, people from all over the world and North America have become interested in the sacred mathematics, the five percent of science and stuff that you guys represent. Although, and especially with the, you know, publishing of the Wu Manual, there's a little bit of detail in that. How do you see that currently in the development of hip-hop culture now that that knowledge is, just people are actually understanding a little bit more that what, where that movement's coming from, from an outside perspective? I'm singing for myself and where it comes from, you know, where it originated from, originated from, the art form of it has always been about being lyrical, being witty, being intelligent, crafting your work, being sharp and being on point, and having knowledge of self, you know, it's the difference between being lost and found blind, being able to see, being deaf and being able to hear, you know, coming
coming into the nation of the gods and the earth, this is something that, you know, that enabled me to see, enabled me to hear, enabled me to observe and look at things um, with great observation. I mean, looking to it, questioning, questioning a lot of things. And, um, you know, growing up as an MC, this only helped me be stronger lyrically because it was all about learning certain things when we were younger or learning certain lessons and knowing it word for word and being able to add on and to other things and apply it. I mean, this is what basically acquiring knowledge is about. So, of course, if you're out there striving to get a lot of information regardless of where you get it from, whether you God body, whether you're a Christian, or whether you're a Muslim, if you're gathering information and, and you're an artist that's involved in something, that's really going to reflect your work. I mean, if you take someone like Rakim, God body, you know, part of the nation of the gods and the earths, you know, he's looked at as many as like one of the greatest or the greatest ever to touch the mic, but a lot of that, his, his lyrical ability, it had mathematics all in it. It was really sparked from that. So, it, it, you know, it plays a big part in, in hip hop, I think. You know, having knowledge of self. It, it, it made me what I am today. It brought me to where I'm at today as far as, you know, knowledge of self. Thanks for answering. Uh, it's been a great chat, and it's a real honor to meet you, man. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Looking forward to a great show. Peace. Peace. All I need is a beat with a continuous loop and a live vibe that'll hypnotize like the flute, along with something that's rugged by nature like the forest. Composed like a symphony without a chorus. A place with the path and trail that you follow. With the wood where you drive your nails with two hollow. Far from reality with a slim chance of getting back. Even if you narrowly escape the hidden traps. Nothing but the driven raps written in my notebook. Inspired by the captain the gown that's on a co-hook. Prepare for the chemical rush. Something new to cause your heart to race, but it's tangible to touch. Associate with those who are consumed with beats. Produce fire until they melt the room with heat. You know my ink lay all over the sheets. Let us gather around, form words every time they meet. A law be your born, see divine equality. Father, then after that, there's the G-O-D. Hear her, I, Islam, then justice. King of kingdom, love, hella right. We